Hey there, welcome back to our Sweater Knit Along. I'm Jana with Pearl Together, and this week we're going to talk about how to weave in all those ends that you end up with when you do the corrugated rib and the color section of the Ripples sweater. So join me for that in just a moment, but the first thing I want to do is give a big public thank you and a shout out to four new patrons in the recent weeks. That's Jillian, Beth, Diane, and Pamela. Thanks so much for supporting the Pearl Together channel and the community. I couldn't be bringing you videos each and every week without the support of my patrons. So thank you so much for helping to make all that happen. All right, let's get into it. Okay, now the meat of the sweater knitting begins. So we're going to start on pattern repeat A, and we're just going to knit the first three rounds plain. And then I'm choosing, as is the pattern, to knit my colors in the same order that I have here on the ribbing for the body. So if you want to know the order of this, go over to my Ravelry page where I have the colors listed out um, from the bottom to the top in the order that I did them. So the link for my Ravelry project page is down below in the video description. So go check that out. But this is going to be very, very similar to the corrugated rib um, where we're just gonna do the two colors. You shouldn't have to catch any floats because each color changes after only three stitches. I am loving how this is turning out, and I think it looks fantastic. I am super excited to keep going, but one thing I wanted to address this time is whether or not you might want to consider weaving in your ends as you go. So at the beginning, we have this little spaghetti mess, and I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to weave in the ends as I go, so when I'm done, I'm done. And so I kind of like that idea. So let me show you. Um, if you watch the cast on video, you'll know that I like to start the incoming color a few stitches back and then trap the floats as I go, but we still need to weave in these ends. I don't want to just cut, you know, I don't want to just cut them off and assume that it's all going to be fine. So let's zoom in a little bit. We'll take this one, just looks like a handy one that might be easy for you to see. So you're going to want an actual darning needle, like you know, something like this that has the curve tipped and it's blunt. Um, and then that one's a little big. Maybe we'll use a little bit of a smaller one like this one. Let's use this one. So we're going to want that, but we're also going to want a pointy one, a sharp one. So hang on to that as well, like just a large sewing needle. So the first thing we're going to do is actually weave in the tail. Then we're going to skim through some stitches, and I'll show you what that looks like here in a moment. So this one's coming out here. What I wanna do is go underneath the, the colors that already match. So I'm just gonna kinda weave in and out, up and down, in and out. There's some duplicate stitching we could do there if we want. I'm just gonna go up and down, in and out, and weave this to secure it a little bit further than it already was. Okay. So after I do that, you know, a couple more, maybe an inch or so more down the line there, then I'm going to thread onto my pointy sharp sewing needle. Then I'm actually going to split stitches on purpose and I'm gonna go in and thread this through stitches that I'm splitting on purpose. Let me zoom in some so you can see that. So I've actually split those stitches on purpose. Then you can safely trim this pretty close at this point. Okay, one down. So hopefully that helps you a little bit. I'm gonna do another one here real quick. Actually, I'm gonna do them all. And then I'm staying ahead of, unlike my normal personality where I leave things I don't wanna do till the very end and then I procrastinate it, I'm actually going to make an effort to do this this time. So I'm going to go up and down, in and out of the in the same color. Do that a little bit, making sure it doesn't show on the other side. And then I'll take my sewing needle and intentionally split some stitches. All right. It's a little fuzzy and difficult to thread, but I can manage. Okay. All right, now I'm going to intentionally, I'm gonna actually go intentionally through 
splitting these stitches right there. Okay, there we go. Okay, all right, hopefully that makes sense. Okay, let's do let's do another one. Let's do another one that's up here in the the body of the sweater and not necessarily in the corrugated rib. And you can see how I'm going to choose to manage that where I won't have these ribbing to hide anything in. Okay, I am going to go up and down through this float. Just kind of weaving that in and out. I did split that stitch a little bit, but that's okay too. All right. Just following along the same. And I think now, now that I've done that a couple times, I'm going to thread my sewing needle again. All right. And I might. I'm I'm pushing with my finger a little bit so I can see where the stitches are that I'm going to go ahead and split. And I'm just going to run these right through these these four or five stitches right there. And then I'm going to trim it closely and call it good. Yay. Perfect. Okay. There you go. Okay, so now we're really into the meat of the sweater and we're just going to be knitting around and around and around. So, what I would like for you to do is tell me what shows you like to watch while you're knitting. If you've been watching something really good on Netflix or Hulu or Amazon Prime or anywhere for that matter, drop me a comment down below and let me know. I'd like to refresh my knitting watch list. So I'd love to know what you are enjoying at the moment. Next week, we're going to have a podcast rather than any tutorial because most of us are just going round and round knitting the body. And then we'll come back when we're ready to separate for the sleeves. Thanks for joining me. Thanks again for watching.